cover some other things too. We've been having, as you mentioned, those five work sessions, and then there's been a few things that we haven't been able to reach a decision on. One is the ceiling uh, material and design. The other one is the restrooms, and then the other one is what type of plumbing uh, material we use. So we'll first cover this, the ceiling design. We had tried to work through it at the work sessions. We ended up with a two-two split uh, straw pool. Then we took it to the academic committee and went to a four-four uh, straw pool. And now Jim Schaefer, I, I hate to say, he's the linchpin <laughs> in this uh, uh, topic. But uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to be three-three tonight. What I thought we are we we're going to take the other votes oh. as they were, or not votes, but to the polls that were taken at the previous meetings. And then we're <laughs> waiting to have Jim in here. And Tammy's yeah. online too. Yeah. Uh, so a little bit overview of the ceiling uh, is we had started out with what type of ceilings were we going to put in the different areas. So we took care of the new admin office and sort of broke that out. It was decided we were going to put an ACT uh, drop ceiling in, in all that area. Then we discussed the new steam room, the new library, the new entrance lobby, main lobby, and then the lobby for the uh, gymnasium and the gymnasium. And we all, I think, agreed at that time to put the, the exposed higher ceilings in those areas. So then it really just came down to what we were going to put into the classrooms. And that's where we got into, you know, ACT or the exposed ceilings, which, which would take some renovation and upgrades and, and to a higher level than just putting the ceilings clear to the roof deck um, if we did the ACT wouldn't have to be finished as well. So that's where we took the straw. We, we all agreed on the first two areas, the, the high ceilings in the new uh, areas, and then the ACP in the admin area. The classroom is where we, we hit the 50-50 straw pools. So then we, you know, we brainstormed what the pros and cons to, to putting the different types of ceilings in the classrooms. And again, it stayed the 50 50. Um, I guess both sides could provide the, the some of the comments that were made for those areas and you know, I could start it out with the ACT since that was my area of preference. Um, I think they're more energy efficient. I think they do a better job of soundproofing with noise. There was a concern about having to clean those high ceiling areas if they were exposed and then kids with like allergies and asthma, and, you know, how many times a year that they would actually be clean versus when they should be clean. There's an extra cost to the higher ceilings. There could be a visual distraction to the higher ceilings. There could be kids, you know, shooting things and throwing things up in there. Uh, the ACT hides the HVAC equipment, and I think, I, in my opinion, is makes that less noisy. You can hide all your electrical, plumbing, any future stuff, you know, do uh, installations easier. So uh, there was a Terry, option Terry, thrown. Terry, do, uh, do you have that one picture of the, to, to, for Jim's sake and the people that are online, of that um, classroom where it showed kind of the the slope of the roof and the so everybody kind of knows a little bit that was mike that had that powerpoint for the last meeting or was that at the academic meeting you had that uh, I did. yeah i don't know if you can bring that up or i can go share with randy real quick you want can i use that computer next yeah. yeah yeah i don't care I, I i just think it's important that we see the <coughs> The yeah. profile of the room. Yeah. And then uh, Ron threw out a compromise, you know, that we're, if we do all the high ceilings in these other areas, put the ACT in some of the areas. And then 
Someone please remind me too of what we were going to do in the hallways. I thought ACT. ACT. Yeah, because of the duct work. That's where the duct work was going to go and the cables and electrical. All that there. stuff. You know, so, but then the plot areas would be the high ceilings uh, in each of the wings. So, I'll open it up for comments for the higher ceilings, I guess, since I covered you. Unless anybody else has anything else, questions, anything, comments on the ACT. The compromise. You want to start, Tom? Or do you want me? I mean, on the, on the open soil concept, we I like it. It's more water. It looks nice. We went up to uh, West Borden's up here and looked at theirs. I like it. And we have to run the walls the whole way up anyway. That's We've agreed to that no matter what. Whether we put drop ceilings in a classroom or not, we're running those walls the whole way up for <coughs> the classroom. Now, whether they're not, as of today, they're not that way. The eyes matter. But we did agree to that, whichever you pick. So. To me, it just looks, I mean, it looks modern, it looks nice. Uh, that's my position on that. I don't know what Tom's is on it, but that's <laughs> And we are going to have the, the units are going to be in each room anyway, so there's no ductwork going in their rooms. So each room will be, each one will have their own air conditioning heat unit in that room, the closet there. So there is nothing above there other than the open trusses that hang down she'll show you yes, there will be well, there, is, yeah, there's there will be, coming there will be at least it's two or three there. ducks feeding out from the, from the wall above the um, okay. oh you're right yeah, yeah. there is i'm yeah. sorry there is ductwork yeah. on this well there's two choices that's the act ceilings and then the open ceiling um <coughs> the atc is safer no one ever has got a question us about it um it's what the standard option would be um, you're going to get this kind of room. Um, and um, all the things that, that Terry said about about risk is on the table. Um, the, uh, the exposed ceilings are going to be different and they're going to require a different set of, of, of cleaning. The acoustical tower ceiling is not a permanent ceiling. It is not clean forever. Um, you take a look around these things in 10 years and they're all filthy. But we don't seem to see that because we, the ACT ceilings are kind of like uh, telephone poles. You just don't see them. So the open ceiling is more risky, no question. The ductwork, the lighting, the wiring must be installed more carefully because it is exposed. But all the wiring is going to be in conduit anyway. There's nobody going to be running conduit on a diagonal across here. There are no reasons to be running data wires in the ceiling. Um, there's the data. The data will be going to Wi-Fi systems. You're not going to be doing drop downs off that ceiling into a, into a child's computer. So, so the only wiring that's going to be in that ceiling is two of the three rows of LED lighting. Where so, do they where do they wire the like the access points for the Wi-Fi? Is um, that through the walls or again? I would I'd be doing that in the in the closets. I'd actually use one of the closets to be putting the Wi-Fi in. Um, that's where the sinks are now, for mm -hmm. instance. Okay, um, but. We okay, we'll put it in the ceiling, but it's going to be it's going to be on a bar joist, and you're going to be running along that joist. Now, do you run that with a cable, or do you run that in the conduit? Okay, but that 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 Wi-Fi unit can be placed on the wall, can't it? Okay, so okay, so how many how many Wi-Fi how many Wi-Fi units do you have in a room? So. So the most would be the most would be one. Okay, so, so you, for the low voltage, you're going to have some heat, some smoke detection, probably one or two units, and probably one unit of, of Wi-Fi. So we're going to have three low voltage wires that are running along the um, the the the, um, the trusses, so virtually invisible. Um, the um, I disagree with Terry that the acoustics of a of a spray of a spray unit can be as good, if not better. 
we also can bring the acoustics down the wall and cover that cover that that scar. So now you can actually put the acoustic material on the, on that wall above, um, let's say, 18 inches above the ceiling. Um, that would be an easy easy solution. The lighting can be installed on pennants, which would which would then reflect off that ceiling, making the room virtually shadow free. Um, and it would be a pennant light, light would have an up and a down light on it. It's difficult to do that in the other in the other the other with acoustical ceilings as low as they're going to be. Um, the exposed ducts could either be spar metal painted or not. It could be fabric duct like we have at the at the gymnasium um, for that short run. The fabric duct actually has a lot of distribution. Uh, it's a nice distribution on it. Um, the most important thing though is how the people feel in the rooms. Okay. And the ACT ceiling is going to be about eight six, maybe nine foot high, at the outside. The proportion of this room is going to be too low. It's going to be a ceiling that's too low. The, the voice won't carry as well. The teacher's voice won't carry as well in a ceiling that low. It's going to be much like what Eisenhower had before, which which had its own set of problems. The open ceiling height would be about eleven six, and the proportions of that room. It's 24 feet wide and 37 feet long and 12, almost and 11 six high, say 12 feet high. That's a hap, that's a better proportioned room. That also allows us to do a better job with the with the natural lighting. So um, it's going to be a much better space for the kids and for the teachers. It's going to be a happier room, um, and, um, and it's going to be a lighter room. So um, at some point. Um, I've respected your professional opinions across the board here. And at some point you have to respect mine. And in my professional opinion, the classrooms will be a better room, it'll be a happier school, and it'll make a significant difference in the way that building feels if we leave those ceilings open. Any other comments, questions? Yeah, Terry. <clears throat> um, I I what kind of, I ask is, Jim, do you want to see those pictures? If we well, yeah, I, I, I'm going to need that. I'm going to need, yes. Randy, can you bring those up? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay, Terry. Um, so I, I like the concept of the open ceiling in part because of what Ron said visiting the Westmoreland County Community College and how that um, how that looked. Um, the the other one, Randy, with the existing Eisenhower. No, it was where the fire at Eisenhower. Yeah, it was an there. That's one of them. No, yeah, that's one of them, but um, go to the next one. You want the open trusses? There it is. That's, you want the one with the open trusses? Yeah, but I think there was a better one than that. Another one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not the one I'm remembering. Yeah, with that one and the other. Well, maybe back up another one, Randy. No, the next one. Okay. That's, that's, that's the bar. That, that, must, that must have been the one. Randy, yeah. can you zoom in on that, please? Keep going. <coughs> okay, so, so my position on this is... As Tom said, that's probably 11 feet to the to the bottom of the um, um, of the joists or rafters um, there that you can see in the picture, and those are the windows on the right. And I'm going to take a slightly different. First of all, I I like the more open ceiling because it does make it more modern. But I think there's a practical aspect to this. I think that the windows should go as high up as we could possibly get them with these provisions 
um, that it does not have direct sunlight on the students themselves so that they're not baking in a greenhouse. But I believe that the more natural light you can put in the room, the better off you are to Tom's point of making it more open, more friendly, more, um, more inviting for the students rather than um, um, limiting the amount of daylight. If you have that open look, you can go basically clear to the bottom of that of that bar joist with your lighting. Now, maybe you have some panels in between or some shading or whatever to um, um, so that the kids aren't uh, baking in the sun in the middle of the winter. But um, um, the higher and the more lights you have, I think you're better off. So for that reason, I would propose that that it be the more open ceiling. And if that if those lights, if those highlights were translucent and just and disperse the light, the the uh, light into the room, we're going to get more natural light penetrating deeper into the room. Yeah. Um, uh, like like a restroom frosted glass. Yeah, frosted glass. Like, you, know, you know, some bathrooms have that kind of frosted glass. Okay, anything else? Any questions, comments? If not, you're good. You, you, your thoughts are on the ceiling type. Well, so right now the classrooms are all the, the drop ceilings. Yeah, right now they're neither. Well, you oh, know, okay. but, but they were no, drop they, ceilings. Previously, yes, they, previously. they were drop ceilings, yes. Um, and you said you had mentioned the, the final dimensions floor to ceiling with the drop ceiling was nine. Is that what you said? Uh, I think it depends on how the ductwork works and the lights. But I mean, right um, now, like previously. Like, right, right now, it's about about no better than nine. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say eight six. Yeah, eight, six. Yep, you got it, Tom. Eight six is what they are now. Uh, no, uh, nine. They're nine, and they were going to be <laughs> dropped. We would have to drop them down to um, eight six is the best case scenario. Uh, eight four is what we're looking at it in some of the classrooms. Um, and that's by nature of uh, you had unit, vent unit ventilators before we didn't have the need for so much duct work within each classroom. Um, so if we were to provide a ceiling in order to miss the ducts, we'd need to be down at 8-4. We're trying to make 8-6 work as, in as many rooms as possible. So it's about a room that would feel a lot like this room. We're about 8-6. I don't six. think this is 8 foot. It may be 8 foot. No, that door is, the door is at least 6-8. I mean, you're off with those things. So we'll be a little higher. Yeah, and the rooms are a little bigger. Right. So, so Elijah, just a quick question. So in the open ceiling, the ductwork would be exposed, <coughs> although it would be um, higher up, uh, closer to where those bar joists are. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Yep. And it would just be for, you know, wherever the duct is for, for one run or a couple runs, and we would try to keep it within the um, the spacing of the joists as well. Um, we may be able to get it such that they're not um, a cup more than a couple inches below the level of the, the bottom of the bar joists. Well, but if you have, you have uh, the bar joists are 16, 18 inches, aren't they? Um, the bar joists are typically 14s. There okay. are 16s, but um, for the most part, okay. they're 14s. Yeah, but even at 14, our, um, your round ducks aren't going to be bigger than 12s. Right. Um, we'll need clearance and like I said, they may they may be a couple inches below or, or right level, especially on the 16s. Go ahead. So well, Jim, one more thing about that picture. Mm -hmm. Those windows, the top of the windows is actually covered up. Mm -hmm. The windows in the new building we're going to have going as high as possible. So mm -hmm. They could even be like these go clear up to Straight. the bottom of the yeah. Yeah. yeah those those windows are but, 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 so but there my, will be a lot more light but my point cinda was that you could raise that window even higher yeah I realize. by by um having more open look on the ceiling so i guess my thoughts on the matter are you know uh, taking notes like all the new areas that, yeah, I, I agree that you know raise the ceiling as high as they should go because that would look aesthetically 
pleasing and they're going to have structural beams that are actually made to be seen. Those are not. Um, so even if you painted them or I don't know what you could really do to them, that's not aesthetically pleasing. That's not even modern looking. It looks unfinished. And it is unfinished because that's the exposed ceiling. All right. If you right. take a look, um, well, Randy, there's a picture of the joists that are painted. Can you can you put back a moment? It wouldn't matter if you painted it paisley for me. Honestly, it would. It doesn't look. That looks very industrial, which is different than modern. And there's a lot of brutalism architecture in the United States as it is. And I don't think that's aesthetically pleasing whatsoever. If you're going to be in a classroom and your choice is work, you know, lit, you know, sit in a garage factory kind of look or a room like this that has a drop ceiling, I prefer the drop ceiling. Um, I understand you, you lose a little height. Um, you know, it's... I understand your point on cleaning. Drop ceilings are never <coughs> nearly as much as they really should be. Um, but I, I, a room like that, no matter what color you made it, I, I don't think I would ever but, choose a room. Like that. But Jim, did you see that? Did you go up to West Mountain? Have you seen that? Have you toured that? I have not toured that. Okay, so they didn't leave those there. They put Randy. I think there's a picture of the right. Westmoreland. So they. They have ACT in their new school and classroom. But in the other areas, like the compromise uh, is, they have the ICT. I, keep, I think it was like the first shot you were showing us there. Right, that's what's yeah, right, right, there. right there on the left. Mm -hmm. So they, they, I'm not sure what they're called. Tom can maybe help me, but they're, they're like a, like some, uh, hanging uh, ballard yeah, or, or some, whatever that 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 kind of um breaks up that industrial look that you're talking about right. jim so i'm i'm assuming that that's that that you'd you'd be using something like that um well i understand the sound dampening but it it seemed to me that the visual um, up at the up at Westmoreland, they had these these hanging panels, okay, that kind of broke up that industrial look. Um, spraying the soundproofing is taking care of the sound, but I'm not so sure that those panels weren't also there to break up the industrial look you were talking about, Jim. Uh, it's more of a dust and dirt problem. That looked like heck. And I like open stuff. And yeah, I, for I'm, reason, are, I'm a big fan of, of open areas. And I think when we were looking that one meeting, we were talking about the pods and, you know, how I forget what the name of those windows were around the, the top of the pods and, and opening that up. I really like that idea because without that, it would be closed in. But this isn't, they're not playing football in these rooms. They're sitting at a desk and focused on the teacher. I don't, I think, all told, the, the benefit you would get aesthetically out of opening the ceiling is, is not outweighed by just the functionality of the drop panels. It's a cleaner look for me, and for the classrooms, I think it's entirely appropriate because they're not, they're supposed to be focused at what's in front of them, not staring up into space. All right, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right, because they didn't use that spray foam up that was more. They, they put like plastic insulation. <laughs> no, I, I, but, but I was under the impression that they were using those hanging panels more for the for the visual and not strictly for the sound absorption. But they, I know they did have some. I didn't get that. It's possible. So. You're with the compromise. Um, I, I like the the high ceilings you listed in the the uh, lobby steam room li library, uh, the two lobbies, the main lobby and the the gym lobby. I, I, I like all that. I think and the pods. So and the pods. I think the classroom. Uh, so, I think should be the ACT. So, so Elijah, when you put the ACT in, 
Um, does the grid work have to lay perfectly flat or could it follow the contour of the roof? Um, it can. Um, and we have done that before, but uh, it, it changes how the lighting is a little bit. And um, Scroll ahead, Randy, back to Lake Trove. That, they, have like a, Lake Trove. they have a slope. Yeah, we didn't like that for some reason. Only true. Well, the, the only reason the only reason I'm bringing it up is, and again, I'm kind of fixated on the, the maximizing the amount of natural light. And that's why they it, did it, it, it is is that that ceiling, Jim, in Eisenhower is higher on the sidewall mm -hmm. than it is in the middle. Keep going, Randy. Mm -hmm. Now, what we can do, Walter, is um, we could create a bulkhead towards the edge of the classroom. Back, back. Um, past where the the ducts terminate, because they don't need to go the whole way to the edge of the room. One, um, they would be held back uh, a couple of feet, maybe. Um, and we could hold the ceiling higher, flat up against the bottom side of the bar joist at the edge of the room. That's the other yeah. like it too. And and trust that by again, Elijah. Um, essentially, we don't need the duct work, which is the 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 restricting factor for the height of the ceiling. We don't need the duct work the whole way out to the edge of the classroom, out to the out to the windows. Um, so for however far out the ductwork needs to go and whether that's two thirds of the room or, or we can we can look at configuring things differently, but we could have the option of um, raising the ceiling height level out towards the windows in order to increase the height of the windows while you still have ACT. Now you would have, um, it would look a little, it would look different than most classrooms because of that, because of that bulkhead. Um, it would probably be uh, a transition from the ACT that you have throughout this, the classrooms that you can access everything above the classroom, but then it would probably be gypsum wallboard um, along the outside of the classroom there. Um, I guess we could do an ACT out there too, and we would want something for the, for the sound absorption. Well, it, 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 I, would, I would need to think about that, but that's an option for um, another option for increasing the height that you are able to get out of the windows. Well, the, the, uh, I mean, I think it does a couple things. Um, it, number one, it gets that, that additional height for the daylight, but I also think that to Tom's idea of, of making it a little more proportion, the height to the width and the length that it would add to that, to that aspect. Um, but still have the, um, ACT as the basic surface area. Can we draw have them draw a few things up, Walter, and then we'll uh, cover uh, that uh, and other? It would, but 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 I think that would be a way to. Yes, I'm fine with that. Because <coughs> I, I I was given instruction we have to be done at seven thirty. Uh, by whom? <laughs> Madam Vice President. That wasn't me. Okay, but yes, you could yeah. draw some things up, yeah. Terry. But, but, but again, I'm. And see, let them look into what. Yeah. No. If it's feasible, whether how it's going to look, and where he's going to put stuff. And... Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so moving on to see other uh, updates or decisions that we sort of ran with. And again, Jim, since you're here, we've gone back and forth with plumbing. The two options that were on the table were uh, full copper everywhere, and then PEX, PEX tubing. Uh, and then I guess there's a third would be a compromise because we did say we wanted copper, I think, in the mechanical room. I thought we all made Mechanic room in the kitchen. kitchen. And, yeah, you're, uh, you're actually required in those two areas, so. Yeah. So uh, we had asked, I'd asked Elijah to get a cost comparison. He just sent that out during the previous meeting, I think, or just a little bit earlier on the paint. I, I saw that. Uh, 
I didn't see it yet, yeah. Terry. Yeah, yeah, I I it it this afternoon. Anyway. Uh, no, he just said it. Okay. Uh, good. What What's the values? So and this um, is material and labor, or is this? Yeah, this is this includes both material and labor. Um, it also includes the um, the hanging connections that are, that are required. Um, they're a little bit more intensive for PEX, but uh, there's not too much of cost difference. We're roughly estimating um, 1,200 total linear feet of piping. That includes cold and hot water and returns. Um, for PEX, we're we're pricing it at 122,900, and the copper all in is the uh, 166,600. So what, Elijah, what is your, uh, technology wise, what is the PEX or what are the advantages of using the PEX? Um, it's a little bit easier to work with and install. You still have to have um, uh, proper, you, you have to have knowledgeable people installing it. Um, the, the biggest thing is that it's, it is cheaper um, and copper is very expensive right now. Um, it, yeah. it has not been out there in the world long enough to see how long it lasts, but we've also not seen, we've not seen, I think, failures that we were expecting to see because um, we, we know for a fact um, that copper is very durable. We might be able to see PEX end up being as durable or, or maybe slightly less durable, but um, I, I think Terry, you've heard this as well, and, and this is how we typically think about it. If you're looking for a building to last more than 50 years, we would definitely still recommend copper. Um, if you're expecting to tear a building down within 50 years, um, there's no issue with using PEX. So, so Elijah, the, um, the typi typically, if I'm not mistaken, um, you know, buildings look at 20 to 30 year cycles before they do any kind of renovation. How long has the PEX been, been out there? Um, 25 or 30 years? Widespread use, 25, 30 years, yeah. Okay, and so so at this point, we haven't seen any, um, um, any major failures um, in using the PEX over that last 25 to 30 year period. Right, and uh, we have learned um you can't you can't use over 180 degree water for instance there's some stuff that we've learned uh through using PEX, but we wouldn't we obviously wouldn't be doing that uh in your building yeah 180 degree water would be too much for an elementary hot water system i would think yep yep we run through the pipes at uh either 135 or 140 and then step down at the at the sinks um forget if it was to 120 or if it was at, uh, it might've so even you, been down at 90. So, so you're running a little higher temperature through the pipes to uh, account for heat loss right. from the boiler to the actual spigot. Correct. What, uh, what size PEX is for like the supply, main supply tubing? Is it, is the maximum size you can get one inch and then you have to run multiple runs to different areas? You no, this out. is this is for three inch as well. They're both they're both three inch. But but we don't need three inch here. There, there's no reason to be running three inch water to these bathrooms. And, and that's the, another discussion. Yeah, the kitchen and boiler you would front of that. Yeah, but the, you know, I mean, but that's that's the whole different ball. Yeah. So, so, so Elijah, Elijah, to, to when you're talking 1,200 lineal feet of this, um, um, what size packs are you looking at? One inch, three inch, two inch, half inch? We were using three inch uh, for both packs and copper. And that that's the 1,200 lineal feet, the main trunk line <laughs> that would go to eat to the bathrooms then? Correct. Are you then running PEX to each of the fixtures? Um, 
we could, yeah. So, so your a cost estimate is only on the three inch. Is that correct? Uh, the the cost estimate is on yeah twelve hundred foot of three inch. Okay. Couple things here. I don't know why we're running boiler water out to a hand wash sink in Arizona when we should when we could be running a small hot water tank for just that restroom or just that area, and we could also be running water not at one hundred twenty or one hundred fifty degrees but at 90 degrees or 80 degrees. Um, I don't understand why we heat water up and then cool it back down and we have a chance of scalding. Um, what he's doing is he's running water out. And this this is typical, I'm not picking on you. He's, run, he's wanting water out in the circulation loop. So there's always hot water there. But that means you got a three inch pipe filled with 12, uh, 1200 feet of, of, of hot water that that's losing energy and putting a small hot water tank out like on the west wing that would be big enough to serve that restroom and the circulation now would be feet. Now, there's nothing in this estimate that counts from the main line to the various fixtures, which is where PEX really shows up because you can run a, a one inch line from that from that three inch line to that fixture. The other thing that happens with PEX is that you can run 500 feet, probably not in three inch lines, but in one inch lines, you can, you can run a long way between joints. I don't know of any chemical in our water system that attacks PEX, whereas copper will corrode and it will pit and it will degenerate. So I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure you have examples where the copper pipe, instead of being one inch pipe, is now corroded into a little pin duct. Now we don't see that in PEX. I've been using PEX for 30 years. I have not had a major failure. I doubt I've had a minor failure. Um, we use it all the time. Um, I don't, and, and it doesn't need insulated um, under normal conditions. So, what what is the PEX made out of, Tom? What, what, it's some. Is it polyvinyl plastic. chloride, or yeah, is uh, it? Yes, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Elijah, do you know? Uh, I don't know the makeup. It is a plastic. It is a plastic. It's a it's not plastic. PVC. No. Okay. It, it's a type of plastic, though. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's flexible, it comes off a roll. I don't know why we're having this discussion. It's, I think it's a superior product. And I know that, that, that although you say copper will be here in 50 years, I know examples where copper doesn't make 10 years. And, and it and usually has to do with, with, with water conditions. So um, I, I think we should move on to this, make this decision tonight. Buy the packs and move on. One thing with like you did do a hospital now, you did bring it up last meeting. You did a hospital in packs. Am I correct? Yeah, and we've done we have done projects in packs. Okay. And there was no problem with the hospital to this day. And they weren't going in for a 50 year hospital, I take it, or a 20 year hospital. I'm taking right, it. right. Going to hospital and we've not, yeah, we haven't encountered any issues to date. Okay. The other thing is that PEX is actually warranted by a company for 25 years. And a copper pipe, you would not be able to find somebody to warrant that pipe in 25 years um, if, if there's a manufacturing fault. And, and Elijah, I'm going to tell you right now, copper is going to, get, if you think it's high now, wait till next year. <laughs> right. Copper is going to go through the roof. That's a basis for my wood preservative. And the wood preserving companies that make that stuff have already told me to uh, hang on to my hat. Hmm. So this is, we're only talking about the pressure piping here tonight. Is that correct? That's correct, right? What's that? The water pressure pipe, the pressure pipe circulation. Yeah, we already know the kitchen, the boilers are going to be copper. So all we're talking about is from there out. But we're not talking about the geothermal system no. or we're not talking about the sprinkler system. Okay. That'll okay. Be before we take a, we got to do a straw. No oh, problem. And before that, Jamie, you have any comments? No. Yeah. On the ones out by. Oh. Copper. Julia. Wake up. No, I'm looking at the price of copper. Oh. It's 45 years. You're right. It's fine. <laughs> um, the plastic stuff. I favor PEX for the long runs, less joints. 
that makes sense. If it's, it's as good, I don't have a problem with that. Thanks. Okay. I was copper, but we'll go back. Uh, next thing was the restrooms. And, and Tom, I'll mention like your comment about the hot water thing. I had that to mention to him for them to come back and look at that. So I'll mention it now, Elijah. Uh, I'd mentioned that a couple of months ago to, and Jim was on that call or on, in the meeting because he explained he was doing a whole circulating loop for the hot water and we questioned that because you could put a boiler or, in, or in, you know, a hot water tank or whatever in that west wing to take care of the gym and that west wing restroom and then the mechanical room could easily take care of the kitchen the restroom and the admin area and the steam wow. sink you know so there's that's you could probably i think we'd be comfortable with two Maybe more at least two, maybe yeah. The maybe problem three. is, yeah, the, the kitchen needs a super hot water, yeah. So, they're, they're made the, the boiler, um, I believe there runs 180 degrees, yeah. And I, and I, I don't want that water in my right. kid's sink, right? It just didn't make sense to it. Was inefficient, as Tom explained, to, to run that loop system for the hot water, you know, especially on the weekends, you know, and every night, you know, you, you're, you're running water constantly. So okay, I'll I'll question that. Yeah, to the uh, the restrooms, you have them designed as your standard. I don't know. If, can you share the thing and you can bring up a sketch or not? Are you ready for that, Elijah? Uh, yeah, I need to. Let me. Um, I'm going to need to request uh, permission again, Jared, to join from my desktop. Okay. Yeah, Brandy, Brandy should be able to do that. Okay. But they were originally designed as a the standard restrooms, you know, boys, male, female. girls. Uh, male, female. Yeah. And then uh, there was a suggestion made about making them, making just one room with individual toilet closets in one room and then a person, a student staff or whoever could use whichever one they chose. There would be no plaque that be made one way or the other. Uh, and then there were some concerns brought up, you know, with, with doing that one room, you know, with, with <coughs> Young, young students that would be going through menstruation. Uh, kids at that age are getting a little bit touchy-feely, playing around, you know. And you have, you know, people of the different in the same area. Uh, what else was concerns? The, uh, the uh, difficulty of supervising the supervision of the supervising, I mean, the difficulty of supervising kids at the restroom function, regardless, was, was a concern. So, what, what's up on the screen now, Terry? What is this? Well, the, that's the restroom as designed. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is the hallway. So you come into the Boys, I'll say on this side, the girls on this side, and then your sinks in the hallway. What you can't see is there's a wall here, a wall here. Yes. So you walk around that. And so this this would be what you would expect. Yeah, I can put the walls up. I'm sorry. Can you put the walls up. There you go. Is this is like an airplane. No, this is this is this is what's there today. Okay. There's, no. there's a boys and girls room. Wait, we have to say something the outside, though. Six on the outside. The airport's yeah. now you have men, women, and children. Yeah, it's like that. There's stuff yeah. yeah. This isn't what we're going to have. Well, this is, that's one suggestion. Yeah, but, but that's that's what we're going to end up with. Right. Okay. So, the, okay. so, so you, you would have the sinks in a joint 
area. Yes, it's into it's in the hallway. And they've seen that at Winber, uh, I guess. And at Pet Purchase Line did it too. Yeah. So, so Purchase Line. United they did it. They all like it. Yes. United did it in 1965. Yeah. So. yeah. And so, what it does is, is the sinks are a problem um, for you to supervise. Right. The kids get out and they start playing in the water. But but she can't see into the men's room. She can't see in the boys' room. She can only hear that there's trouble. Okay, and so the sinks in the hallway alleviate that problem. The, but, um, and and I'll certainly grant you that I do not have a lot of experience with young kids. But what I do have, they can make messes of indescribable quantities and amounts um, or types, and having all the sinks out there particularly with a little kid is okay to it, it's better it's supervision it's better it's supervision too. Well, it's grade level too. Right. Not too bad. right and the kids aren't going to sit there and make a mess if the teacher's standing there watching them there's cats well out I, there. I was thinking more like soiling themselves or that sort of thing um uh, if, if they're doing that they need help that's yeah, yeah that's my that point that tom and that's not bathroom. something but that, that would be a different wanted. bathroom that we would use there would be different that's what the bathrooms like in the artistic support rooms that they use those life skills. life skills those kids go in those rooms okay okay that was my concern <coughs> yeah. was that yeah. if you're if you're concerned you're gonna love this next scheme. oh and this was for hygiene too or so they could teachers could actually make sure they wash their hands yeah 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 and make sure they can see that they wash well, their okay. hands that, and that's yeah and that's fine it just yeah, no, with those uh, kids that would need help with that kind of stuff, the teacher there's no different. privacy there if you've got to do any kind of right. <laughs> but a teacher, okay. but a student that has soiled themselves or something like that, we don't take them to the main restroom anyhow. We use the nurse's bathroom. We use the okay those kinds of bathrooms so that someone can help them and clean their clothes and those kinds of things. That's right that's up. where I, exactly well, where I was going. Go ahead. There, there are handicap stalls in each of those restrooms. Is there not a sink in each of the handicap stalls? No, no there's, there's just, not. There's just, there's just, no. Okay. But if there's a sink, I don't see it there. Yeah, it's, there, it's not there. If you put a sink in there, that still gets to be 15 wires. Well, I just any answer. other questions, comments on this layout? Yeah, we have another layout to shut up. Go ahead, Elijah. Anyhow, the, the other kids uh, in there, anyhow. Okay, just scheme. Yeah. And this just has a number of toilet closets. It would have basically the walls on the back. Both sides go clear to the ceiling, clear to the floor. The door in the front would be a little bit longer. Would be a door. Higher, but there would be a gap at the bottom of yeah. four to six inches, or I think yeah. we talked about. And so this would be the boys' room, and then the girls' room would be no, the same no. as this? No, I mean, that course. is the boys' room. You, you, you have to change your thoughts. You walk into that hallway. And a boy or a girl or a cat could use any restroom they wanted to. Don't go there with cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, so it's it, not a, no. the, the restroom, the rest of the toilet area becomes whatever that's whatever that child is. And there's no, there's no, um, uh, um, no gender. No gender. There's no gender on that restroom. Non gender restroom. I, no. Um, <laughs> I, I, you mean there's I no privacy for the like a little dividing wall and then when the girls go one side and the boys go to the other. No, no, there's nothing. It's just private. You, you walk, there's you ten walk private the restrooms here is what there are. Right. You, you walk in and shut the door restroom. and that's your restroom. Can your head fit under the bed? No. 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 And it'd be no and different you if you went down to the, the family restroom. Yeah. Yeah. No uh, floor to ceiling. Have you seen these? Is a purchase yeah. line you said how's that? No. There's a couple of oh, schools. I don't know about well, they had the sinks outside, so uh, the sinks outside. But I thought you told me a couple of schools here had those. I, uh, I'm, I'm not aware of any building that actually has this yet. Um, it requires a variance from the, from the building code. Yeah, you said no, I mean, anywhere in the county. Yeah, I think the feedback you got was Lancaster. Latrobe wanted to do this, but this is what okay, I, I wish they could have done. They saw in Ohio and they wish that they would yeah. have done. I think that's what you told them, yeah. Yeah. I think we talked. And they saw multiple places in Ohio. And I don't know. We, we briefly talked about it, Ron. You brought up this idea too. The compromise would be we could build the other one with full walls on the three walls. Even put the you know bigger doors on, or you could put the bigger doors on later, and then you just take the plaques off if Indiana Indiana District schools ever want to go to no gender. 
you just take the plaques off the wall. Terry, I just don't think this community is ready for no gender bathroom as a standard. Right. I, had, I have no problem with a family bathroom <laughs> or a bathroom designated for that, but I just don't think this community is ready for that. Walter, what would happen on this one if you put um, girls on the right and boys on the left on those doors? I still think there needs to be physical separation between them, Tom. I really do. I worry about the young girls starting there. Well, that's what I'm concerned and, and about because it's... Then there's blood in there and a boy goes in there and we suicide rates are up already and then that kid's teased forever. Sometimes if you're that young, you, know, you don't know what I, to that do really you by surprise. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't mind it so much for the little kids. Like, I think the kindergarten is first and second, maybe even third grade are fine. I just have, a, and I think junior high, well, while they can still be kind of ridiculous, I, I think this third, fourth, and fifth grade, that was, I'm not convinced it's the thing to do. And, 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 and I understand that. I, I do want to bring it up, though, in, in that there's going to be kids that are transitioning or, or, or you're going to have, we're putting, the, we're putting the, the faculty in a position where they have to decide how we're going to deal with. Uh, a child that's born a boy that wants to use, identify but as not female. That many. I mean, you can have one bath. You can have a, a family bathroom and well, three different stalls up at the front of the school. Yeah, and we Somebody's, don't. We don't have that yet. Yeah, but you could. I, I to me, it's not about quite about that is, issue. It's about basic privacy and all. That. I think it's more for the little girls. Jim, I think it's a not a problem. You've had any but that one's really, really hard for me to swallow for this this age group. I I kind of agree. I. I appreciate the conundrum We're like what's the teacher going to do if little johnny's jill you know what do you do with that <laughs> um but that being said you know you'd almost rather have a third bathroom than have have that situation because i think this age group you know, to your point you know if a little boy goes in after a girl and, and there's a little bit of blood or something and it's not even only that little girl goes in and there's there's a turd on the seat because little boys are not hygienically blessed either. So it's, <laughs> I, I think that's, <clears throat> it creates more problems than it solves. I understand where the spirit is, but I, I don't think that that's, it's, it's really tough to, for me to wrap my head around. Well, going back to the other one, yeah. do we have any interest in building the walls full width in, in those rooms? Well, we talked about too, Terry. If you go back to the other one, we could have it ready in case the law ever changes. Right. You could very easily take them front walls out if right. we put a beam across the front there to begin with. Right. And structure a beam. You have to, when he shows the front. See, if we ran where them two blue walls are, if he ran a beam across there and the law ever changes, we could actually, without much money, change that then to the other one. We yeah, probably wouldn't need it. Wouldn't, wouldn't even need to. Would you? Well, they wanted it so the teachers could actually see. Right, but that was you could do that without running a beam there, or put the walls there. Yeah, but you'd have to take it. I mean, if they ever had to take yeah. it out, then you'd have to have something above there. But we also could let well, they, they're they're like a board players. players and I'll figure it out. Well, that's true too. Yeah. Right. And then Amen. take the plaques mm -hmm. off. And like I said, do we want to just do we want to build the walls in between full height now, or wait till the future? Yeah. I, I don't think, think I don't think we do because of the, because the stalls have to be bigger. Um, not only for the wall thickness, but actually the handicap is will require us to make this, the stalls bigger. So, I, I think we lose the stall. So, so Elijah, do we Elijah before uh, we jump? Well, we well, can do we them. Go ahead. Do it in metal. You can do those dividers in metal. Yeah, they well. don't need to be. Yeah, they're solid. Not, or, um, all masonry all walls. They can be a full height of the metal or phenolic or um, divider. So, so but, yeah, but 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 they have to stay. If if the toe space isn't under the divider, you have to have <coughs> the, the, the handicap space has to be bigger. Uh, Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so so the question I have is the stall spaces in this option versus the gender neutral option are the stall spaces themselves have to be different as far as the the uh, 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 footprint on the floor? Uh, just just for the ADA accessible, <laughs> as Tom was saying. Um, 
It has to do with the clearance for um, for your toes when you're in a wheelchair. So it would have to be slightly larger in both in both directions, but not by not by much. And and slightly larger in the gender neutral bathroom or slightly larger in this bathroom? In this scheme, if you were trying to future proof it, but it would have to be that way in the uh, for the gender neutral. Uh, if you want the full height partition where it's it's totally private, um, you might have uh, a two to four inch reveal or opening below the door. Um, and again, the door is full height, but uh, in order for those side walls and the front wall to go full height and be completely completely closed off, otherwise, that's where you would need to expand. But the, the but, the commodes, stalls. but the commodes for the regular people, not the those that need the ADA, those footprints are the same regardless of which scheme. Right. Yep. Except that except that we may be triggered into a second stall that's three foot wide, where we have the ADA <coughs> stall, and then you have a, you have another stall that has the um, grab, had, grab bars on both sides. Um, so what what what, what I would my suggestion you need would about be nine more inches to, to pull that off. My my suggestion to the to the group would be that um, the real issue is not the walls at this point in time. The real issue is the location of the commodes and the plumbing that supports it. And if you space them today with that, then as Tom said, if a future board wants to change it. It becomes really a simple matter of putting the dividers, walls, or whatever in between, and the the incremental cost is is um, right now would be relatively dirt cheap compared to trying to retrofit, um, um, you know, the traps and the and the uh, plumbing and so on like that. So yeah. so maybe you could at least do that, to make sure there's enough room between the. Uh, various commodes, ADA or, or regular, just to um, uh, make sure that some future point you would have that change um, without breaking the bank. Yeah, I agree with that. May I ask, Karen? Yeah. Are you, you kind of heard the comments, are you okay with what, we, what I do? Yeah, I'm fine with whatever you decide. I mean, the biggest dilemma that I come across is like what you're saying right now, the law says they can use whichever bathroom they want to use, whether I, I like it, you know, whatever. So, I mean, they can use whichever one they want to. So I can, I can have a boy going into a girl's room and vice versa right now in my school. Have you? The junior high, I'm sure that's happened. I have not observed it, but I'm <coughs> sure that might have happened. Too smart. Again, I, I, I again, I can't, I can't comment on that, but I can, I, I mean, so, I mean, I'm comfortable either way because I think that we're going to have to in the future go with the other scheme. I think it's going to be the way the world is. Okay. So we're going to, they're going to look at putting the uh, <coughs> facilities where they would need to be in the future. Then that way the dividers will, and I'd say look at putting the dividers where they will be in the future too, if there's room to do it, Elijah. I don't believe there is. Yeah, we could, we could, Looks like. we could even install them now, full height. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I know it's, not the, it's not the full height the ceiling <coughs> that, that I'm concerned about. It's the at the floor where the toe space is is what makes the space bigger. Mm -hmm. Right. But but I don't think we want these these restrooms to have a connection from the toilet rooms to be connected from toilet to toilet, which is which is. One thing to have the door undercut, but to have these four inches of gap between the toilet that allows all kinds of bad things that. Okay, so Elijah, you you got everything for that. Yep. I have one more thing under other updates here. We we were going to have the crawl space sample. Is that done, Jamie? And they have not been out to do. They have not. They have not been out to do any of that sampling yet. Okay. Can you follow up with a call. All right. Appreciate any other yeah on the crawl space. Yes, um, in order for it to be what we need it to be, the exterior walls need to be insulated, and the um, and we need to add some air movement to that space, <clears throat> but not part of the building movement. It needs to be its own independent air. Movement. Right. And then the the little vents that are are on the side of that building need to be blocked off. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure that's okay. Yeah. You got that, Elijah. 
Yep. Anything else on Eisenhower? Any questions, comments? Thank you. Um, I would just say, as we're as we're working through um, getting these getting these documents together for this DD resubmission as as fast as we can, um, the the ceilings conversation is a important one for CJL to be able to complete their ductwork drawings. So yeah. as soon as we can get that wrapped up, the better. Well, that's in your court now. I'll um yeah, I'll, and I'll send over a sketch uh, showing what that bulkhead would look like and um, you know what what we're anticipating so far with the duct design. Eliza, mm -hmm. I'd like to know where a uh, two to five ton heat pump is located. Um, I can find no re I can find no accessible panels on the side of these smaller units. So okay. I, I want to go look at one. Um, or Cheney can go look at one, but but these closets are way too big for what for what we're buying here. Okay, I I totally agree. If if we're able to get rid of that side access, the need for that, if they can access everything through the front, um, by all means, we should shrink these closets. Yeah, yeah. It just it just doesn't make sense to me. I I I, I can't find or I can't find these smaller units with the accessible panels when I. When I sent you a note last week, I was feverish, but the, uh, those, are, those are the larger units. Okay. Bigger than he's going to look at that. The, the, the one thing, though, that I would ask Elijah at this point, um, when, you, when you're looking at that bulkhead, Elijah, I would this, say. This is the window bulkhead. That you're right. talking about. No, no. No, I'm talking about the, the, the bulkhead that where you're going to run your duct work or whatever before you. Above the lockers. You, above the lockers. On the inside wall. Yeah, on the inside okay. wall. Okay. Um, I, I would suggest as a concept, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the more that ductwork ran up in between the uh, the bar joists, uh, the further back you could maybe keep that bulkhead to maximize the, the amount of the angled. Um, mm -hmm. well, they're, they're running it below. What they can do, and, and I'm not sure what the problem is here, you have the lockers going up to seven feet. You should be able to put the room supply duct above those lockers in that same slot. Then you should be able to come off the top of that duct and run the duct, the metal duct, up into the bar joist. That's that's okay. kind of what I would. Yeah, but I mean, the, the geometry works, um, and I'm not sure why we're why we're having trouble getting this to work. All, all I'm getting at, Elijah, was to minimize that bulkhead that would extend out into the room uh, by yeah. utilizing that space between the bar joists um, uh, to run most of the duct work. Well, yeah. and, and we have almost 30 inches between the outside wall, I'm sorry, the quarter wall and the finish of the inside wall where there's lockers on. Okay, but For anyway. Tom. Sorry, go ahead, Walter. Uh, anyway, that's that. when you're starting to gain this thing out, that's all I'm asking you to do is to use Part of that strategy to hide as much of it up in the between the joists as you can um, um, to minimize what the, the the location of that bulk bulkhead and keeping it more to the one side. Elijah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm asking you to control your mechanical engineer. So Tom, yeah. what we've been working on in the in the past week um, has been we're we're trying to utilize that same space for the outside air as well. Um, looking at reducing the number of units on the top on the roof so that we can get smaller duct size, but also make the, the passing of supply and outside air work in that same space. How do you reduce those, how do you reduce those makeup air units and not get bigger ducts? The duct size. That's, that's what we're doing. It's magic. Okay. Okay. So, you, so we, we want have, to, we want to maximize the ceiling height. Bottom line, everywhere, mm -hmm. just not out at the outside. Okay, anything else on Eisenhower? No. East Pike Renovation Project update. And this is mostly you too, Elijah. I know Jared, Elijah, and I met with Dan Kiever from Macero last week. They provide construction management services. He's the chief estimator <coughs> at Macero. And 
we makes me want to meet with him to see when the best time to bid this East Pikehold office uh, thing was that he was saying to bid it in October, mm -hmm. which I'm not sure we're going to meet. But Elijah, you going to throw your schedule up, or Jared, you going to throw yours? One of you guys had a couple of different schedules, and I don't know where yeah, we landed. we were we were actually making the schedules at the same time, and uh, I'd sent mine out. I didn't realize that Jared had sent one out almost at the same time. Uh, I also hadn't realized that the board needed to vote to release a project for bid, um, which sort of sets up when the earliest that we could start it would be. Right. And that's, I talked to Walter last week. I called him to make sure when he and Mike were talking about canceling that board meeting, it, it wasn't going to mess up the bidding of this project. So, but I think we worked that out. Okay. Uh, and um, Jared, I do have that email if you wanted me to call it up. Yeah, you can do that. Yep. I just pulled. Were you good with his calendar or is, is yours what we're going with or a hybrid? Mine, mine didn't work with his, uh, with the, mine didn't work in order to get yours, <laughs> get the release for bid approved at a board meeting. Yeah, but long story short, he also provided us a handout of lead times on a bunch of different architectural stuff, HVAC stuff, plumbing, electrical, and furniture. And then CJL sent an email today saying that there, we should expect 42 weeks for rooftop units. But according to this fella here, they're saying 12 to 16 weeks. Uh, so CJ Al was suggesting that we phase this project. I will, I'm not there unless, you know, someone else knows more information. This is, this is for this one. It's for the old office and it's for this admin wing. Uh, so what we would like to do, we definitely want to have the bids in and accepted a week or two before Thanksgiving is what we're shooting for. Uh, a lot of contractors shut down between Thanksgiving and New Year's. So we definitely want to get this thing on the street and out. Yeah, I think we were looking at board yeah, approval. I can't read that. Yeah, board approval to put it out to bed October 10th, which is if we would cancel next Monday's board meeting would be our next our the next board meeting. Um, October 11th, the package is released. We can do that multiple ways, multiple avenues to get that out to every potential bidder that we have. Um, and Sarah was going to give us some potential ones yes, to call if they weren't on Jared's list already. Yep, he sent me that list, so I have that as well. Um, I have November 10th as a tentative date for bids being due, which is about four weeks, close to five weeks after that initial release. Um, November 21st, which would be two weeks after that is to have would give about two weeks to have really Bucard Horn and CJL review the bids, make sure they're happy, um, make sure they all seem reasonable. November 21st, the Buildings and Grounds Committee could discuss them and talk about what, what recommendations they have. And then December 5th is our board meeting for December where we would award bids. And that that's the best we can do with what we have, I guess. Is it is it possible to have a, a Zoom board meeting just for this one subject? Yeah, you 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 have the right to call the meeting whenever you want. Um, it's up to the board. You for, can. Yeah. We're bidding it before Thanksgiving, though. We're just won't award it till after Thanksgiving. So I, it's I, just, already I understand bid. that, but but <coughs> but if we pull a four in two weeks or three weeks, does that help us? So. Sure, how much time do you need? Would you be ready by Monday? I mean, one thing we also could do is um, wait till the first academic committee meeting and make a um, special meeting that night. If we, it's really up to the, you know. It's up it's, to, it's, I, I mean, Eli and them, I know, seems like White Township has pretty much given their approval. It's mm -hmm. the car horn ready to release the bid documents. It's yeah. So Eli, where are you guys at on this process? Because here's well, where we're at. Um, I know, I know we have some spec coordination left to do, making sure we have our front end completely tied in with how you guys want it to, want it to happen. Um, 
I don't think we have anything left on the drawings. We're, we are very close, I would say. I think in my schedule, it was another week or maybe a week and a half until we were bidding. Other than a But phasing. I think we could, other than, yeah, the phasing plan was the other thing. Mr. Kerr, what you could do, Mr. Harley, to your question is you could, if you don't want to meet next week because they said a week and a half, you could have a special meeting October 3rd because we'll already be here for academic, approve it that night or wait the following week. It really, it, it'll be work for you. The problem becomes then you're going to have to schedule another special <coughs> board meeting in November because we only have one special. We only have one board meeting in November because the fourth Monday is the Monday after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I'm but okay that's up to the board. It yeah. did before Thanksgiving, and, and we're what a week before or two weeks before Thanksgiving to bid. It, you do yeah. two weeks before Thanksgiving. Yeah. So that really just gives the consultant time to look at things, us to look at things, and then we approve it after Thanksgiving. We had actually awarded it. Um, I understand that, and yes, that makes perfect sense. It's just that if, if this is ready to go and we can get it done now, um, buying a week or two in construction is always useful, um, and allow them to go ahead and make their make their orders and get the get the current things. Um, what are you saying on RTUs as far as lead times? Have no, there been I, any big ones lately? I'm being told more of the 42 weeks, but I'm also told that you have to order like we did the roof and, and then wait. One of the reasons I don't use rooftop units is because I can get vertical units in closets. Um, the rooftop units are difficult, and they're not. And and they're not. They're, there's not one sitting on a shelf waiting for you. Yeah. Okay. When you order it, they're going to they're going to order the aluminum um, and start making it. So, um, giving these guys. The most time is what I would prefer to do. If these, if they, if they What's everybody documents? else think, Ron? I'm fine with either way we go. Yeah. A week or two, I don't. I don't know if a week or two matters. I'm fine either way. Send them. I'm okay either way. I do think that a week or two could make some difference. If they get, if they would get it awarded sooner, even though they're shut down between Thanksgiving and New Year, they would probably start working. Mm -hmm. Enjoy it. Okay. Sooner the better. Um, sooner the better. Too. I guess one of the decisions we do have to make even before we put it out to bid is when are we going to allow construction to start? Because I, I don't know that we. Well, that'll be in that phasing plan that he's going to put together to see what they could do while school's yeah. still in, so, and then what they have to do when school's out. And the big, the big issue is going to be this wing. You know, they're going to at some point take that ref rooftop unit off. Yeah. And this, so, this building is going to be without anything, anything so, for a while. So, so Elijah, weeks. so Elijah, what is the time frame uh, for construction of the old office area in the East Pike? That's the one I'm more concerned about as far as starting while school is in. Because there's three classrooms. Okay. Can you make a suggestion here? Yes, we understand. Sorry, go ahead, Tom. Um, what I'd prefer to do is to have the contractor pose a schedule of construction and a phasing <coughs> for our approval. Um, and by then, he would know when his machines are coming in, where his duct work is, what he, what. So, so I, I, I do this a good bit when, when, I'm, when I'm working in the condition like this, where, where I ask the contractor when he bids the thing or, or as part of his, his ramping up is to propose the schedule for our group. So the, the question, Tom, along those lines is, um, and this relates to the concept of accelerating the bidding process here, is if it were approved or awarded by that first week of December, whatever, um, and this building is essentially shut down for. Well, we want to try to award it before Thanksgiving. Well, okay, okay, even better There's yet. Hunting season starts. It, it, even even better yet, Saturday Terry. But, but where where I'm going with this is, is there any advantage to having that week or so between Christmas and New Year's for them soon. to do any of this work while school is not while well, the kids soon. aren't in the building? That's, that's the mini system back there. But it's still. So, but again, if they if they have the piece of equipment laying in their yard and they can do the work and they want to do it, then they would propose to do that. Well, yeah. well I, I guess my point though, Tom, is if they even if they don't have that 
that unit ready to install? Is there work that they can do in those office area classrooms to get ready for it in that week period of time? And, and, and the answer is yes. Okay, but but I'm, but I'm, I'm losing my workforce. I don't have I don't have the, the duck material. Um, but maybe I do. So you, you, this is a great conversation to have with the contractor after the bid. The contract yeah. wouldn't be able to tell you. The, the bottom line is there question. may not be any. What, what I was trying to do is in, in, ensure that the thing was bid out yeah. time enough for the contractor to maybe take advantage of doing at least that amount of work uh, or that's that area. Yeah, it's a lot of work to do in three weeks. Yeah, okay. but, but, but the other thing is, is that, is that doing this work here, <coughs> this might be great work to do in in April, May. Okay, when when we're kind of heating and air conditioning, and you take the thing off the top, you got nothing, but you don't have heavy air conditioning, you don't have heavy heat, and they could actually work during the day in this building. So again, having a conversation when the guy knows when his machines are showing up, and and he has all his supply problems solved, that's the way to do this project. Well, let me ask this: okay. Can the people even be working in here if we don't have air exchange? Yes, in, in, in April and May. All the windows open. They got fans. That's they got low heaters. Okay. I mean, this could be a big deal on this. Cheney, any thoughts? I know we're supposed to have certain airflow. You don't have that airflow now. You can, because it's not an educational space, the, the air change requirements are much, much lower because the population in all the offices. You can't open windows and you can talk to you can accommodate that air change for that size of space with one person. And Cheney, not to be, make sure I understand this. We have one, that classroom of those rooms, one of them is being used currently. So we'd have to relocate that room during this phase, in the second semester. Depending on how that, that work plays out. And where do we project that room to be? Because last time I checked, we were full. No, I'm sorry. But it's, you're talking, you're talking about the, it's the rooms on each side. You're talking about the classroom on these bike? I'm talking about the old office, old, old office area. Oh, yeah. um, we used one room in there, was dedicated to a guidance counselor before, right. that is now a classroom. And I think all my other rooms are filled throughout yeah. this whole building. And we're talking about relocating a classroom now. But you're going to have why. those three this rooms. The contractor. There's the three rooms on each side of that old office that are being utilized that are going to be worked on, too. We're putting air conditioning okay. in okay. those rooms, I'm, too. I'm, so there's I'm, a lot of phasing. To okay. This. okay. I'm, I'm good with the idea of contact. Well, accelerating, but 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 having the contractor provide the guidance. And there'll have to be an item without there. approval. Yes. There'll have to be an item in there for them to provide your schedule for our approval. So, as far as the timeline, can I throw out? Maybe we hold a special board meeting on October third, right after academic. I'm fine with that. Yeah. And then we could schedule another special board meeting. Have it. Have, uh, have the board no. member in front of academic. So that you can say it's yeah. at five o'clock or five thirty. Okay. Yeah. We can do that. And I, I would support that exactly because that Elijah needs a week and a half. He said, "I hate to rush this and get this wrong." Well, right. But we can approve moving forward, and Elijah could finish the thing up the next day. Okay. So October third is when we're going. Yep. Yep. And then we could schedule to actually award the bid if we didn't want to wait till November fifth. We can hold the Buildings and Grounds Committee November twenty one and just do the same the, thing. The meeting <coughs> either right right after the board, right after before. the committee meeting before. Before. Well, I would think we would want to talk about. I mean, oh, that's right. Yeah. I mean, we can we can discuss break, it in the open the board meeting if we wanted. Yeah, that'd be best. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good deal. October. You'll be here October. Right? Yes, but not after the sixth. So we better get our votes in line. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Elijah. We'll follow up on all that. And next up is an update on East Pike roof replacement update. Yes, and Jane. Not a whole lot to discuss there. Roof's done. Uh, did a final walkthrough uh, with uh, one of the reps from CJL, and uh, we're good. Did you get the warranties? Did we just go to five o'clock? Uh, so I have to read Project went like very well. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. They had a few. Minor issues, a couple small leaks, took care of them immediately, uh, and uh, they were really good for them. They were really nice job, and finished, I think, ahead of schedule with the late start they had. Luckily, they had some insulation on stock, 
because we got held up with a late delivery. Uh, but they, we were concerned about them still being working on part of it when school started. They were done. Turned out very well. I was very happy with that. Very good. Very good. Okay, so is that your report? That's pretty much it. Done, finished. Do you want to do the next part of it, Jared? Have yeah, we, I'll let. Uh, have we paid for it? Yeah, well, this is the. Huh? Have we paid for it? Paid for the roof. Yeah. Part of it. You signed the checks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't sign the check. Yeah. I'm going to let Cheney talk. This is the board out of the committee had asked us to come back. We had done the electrical testing at Forest Man. Um, couple weeks ago or i guess probably a month or two ago over this was that in the fall or the spring <laughs> someday in the last pass someday <laughs> we did the horse man oh, we're working on actually fixing the problems at horse man at the, the ultrasound they they still haven't scheduled to come out to make those repairs but, they, but the board has approved they put out work to out. get that scheduled uh so this is the same company that uh that did that scans for us uh this is their proposals for each of the buildings uh to do those same scans uh there's two different there's a an ultrasound and a, an infrared I look for hot spots and uh failing or weak spots and uh this is that uh <coughs> the other four buildings everything except for eisenhower of course and uh It's a very, very inclusive uh, process. They did a really good job with their with their scans at uh, Forest Man, uh, and the repair cost was probably half of what I thought it was going to be for what they found. Uh, so we're looking about twenty-four thousand. Right? Yeah, I think I totaled up it was twenty-four million something. Is 10 perfect or one? How is the, these numbers work? That's how many there are. So, is Forest Man not it's, on It's a count of... Uh, Forest Man is done. Forest Man is already done. Forest Man is done. So, how does it tell us what it is? No, you don't know because we have a paper. We have to pay for that first. Oh. Okay. So when you this is it, a proposal, not a yeah. proposal. Yeah, these are proposals for the other four buildings okay. for the same process that do we need to you do asked this? me to have uh, them do. Do we need to do course. this at the plus for us, too? We just not finish with this yet. Just ask the question. If, if we can do that down the road. So we did have the main. The, the main entrance changed there two years ago because we had that issue. Uh, no sparking. You know, it's so the main is good. It, it's just pretty necessary to create. There's not so, that much down there. So, Cheney, you said that they they found some issues at Horace Man. Yes. And the cost of repairing was less than, um, which is great. What issues did they primarily find? Was there a any kind of a common thread, like all the plug outlets all had loose wires in them, or you know, what? what there was what? a lot of a lot of it was minor things, uh, code deficiencies that they were repairing. There were a few hot spots where they have to actually uh, take the power off and, and tighten up a lot of connection points, that, and that's. That's typical failure points in oh, hot spots where your lugs, uh, over time, they yep. degrade. So they're they're going to be tightening up a lot of those lugs in, in the different uh, switch gear. The aluminum wire that we use um, with heat, heat coaches moving, um, that's where it, it works itself basically loose. And, and, and that's where you see the things get real hot. And they'll, they'll recoat when they take those apart. They recoat those with, correct me if wrong, no locks. Yeah. They, would even have they put that back in and they take them back up and they torque them to a spec. Yep. No, no, I, um, 
I was just curious what they what they actually found because that kind of impacts what. And there were a number of hot spots, uh, and all the other stuff was just minor things. But there were, uh, without having a report, I don't remember exactly. There was five or six the very concerning spots where you can see on the scan uh, the ultra the ultrasound scan. You could see that those connections were running hot. And that over time, that's just going to worsen. So uh, that's that. That was the answer I was looking for, Cheney. Okay, because then that's really the justification <coughs> for spending the twenty-four thousand. Is what other hot spots are we not aware of in some of these other buildings? And is there something we can do about it? And obviously, there is. We can have these guys. Um, Take a look at each of the other buildings. So what we want, uh, this is a precaution, a test okay. for prevention you know, for problems down the road. Yeah. And, so, and, there's, and there's no reason to expect that the wiring in the other buildings is any better than the horse man. The only the only one that that I would would challenge Tom, and maybe there's justification for challenging it. Maybe there isn't. Was the fact that the junior high went through. A major renovation, approximately twenty years ago, eighteen years ago now, whatever it was, and so would you have that same impact of the wires loosening over time during that time period versus? I guarantee you that they didn't go in and tighten the lugs up with yeah. the existing yeah. panels. Yeah, and when they did that renovation. All right, moving on, Jim. We're going to do all the rest of the buildings. Yeah. Ron? Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. And uh, Joya. All right. We'll make a motion for that on the next agenda. All right. The high school stadium high mass light. Who's covering that? Cheney? Dan? Dan? No, Dan left. Yeah. We were, I was supposed to have a demo come out today, but uh, I think because of the weather, he didn't come out. To look at the polls at the senior high, we have a couple weeks ago we had one just on the football field side. We had four lights out. Now we have eight. Four bulbs out. Four, yes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, three of the four that just went out just recently, we have a bad circuit. Uh, Dave and I were looking at it today. Uh, if you try to set the breaker, it's going right back out. So we have an electrical issue up on that pole at some point. Uh, the original quote that we got, uh, I, I was a little concerned with just, and that's when we only had four bulbs out at the senior high. It was a cost of $17,000. For four bulbs? How old and is this? That was not to cover, and I was providing the bulbs. And if there had been any other components bed, we'd have to pay for that. The biggest part of that was the rental of 120 foot reach lift. Uh, I contacted a gentleman that goes to our church. He was supposed to have a guy out today, and I think because of the weather, he didn't come. They climbed the poles. Yeah. So he gave me a ballpark of number uh, for a climber, it's $120 an hour. For a ground man, it's 90. He said, We'll forgo that if you provide us with a ground man. I said, I will. <laughs> For ninety dollars an hour. Thank you, Jared. Uh, <laughs> he's the client though. <laughs> so he, he was estimating two days. I think because of this current electrical problem that we just found, it might be three. But even one man for one twenty an hour for three days. Significantly is much, less than a reasonable cost. Yeah. How old is that lighting system? <clears throat> that I do not know. I haven't found any paperwork on that. Uh, one of his main, it's, his main it's, reasons it's before Walter out yeah, there it's old. was it's to old. inspect the poles. Not that Walter's old, but the lights are old. Could be covered here. I don't know if you saw Brookville. If Brookville just puts all new lighting on your football field. Yeah. I don't know what it's some kind of LED. Isn't it? They do, and what they do now. Um, not to change the subject. Yeah, but what they do now is pretty neat. They have lights now that can um, change color, turn off and on much quicker. Usually it takes 
time yeah. to warm the new ones, the old ones up. Um, they do a lot of that now in a lot of stadiums. Um, it, it, it's much more successful. Yeah, I just seen Brooke go put them all. Yeah, my brother so was an electrician. So at this point, it's the same company. I want to bring them yeah. up with a lighting rep, from right. like Repco or one of those companies. They actually give us a budgetary number yeah. right. to convert to LED right. in the future. Uh, one of the schools that I talked to just recently, they just did their upgrade, and it went from two 600-amp services to one 60-amp for their entire football field. Probably right. their electric bill. Would you, would, I'd be no, curious what the electric bill pay for itself. Absolutely. Over Little Lake, we use Moscow. Okay. And I recommend that you make contact with them. Moscow. 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 Is that right? Esco, could you... Oh, could it be an ESCO project? Yes, yes. We have two fields with the old lights on that are just big old lights. Yeah. And then we have these new Moscow lights. They're running at maybe 20%. Those two fields, 20% of the cost of the other two fields. 24 hour, they monitor the lights. So that when one goes out, they call you and they come fix it. So, I mean, it was a 25-year warranted system. Yeah. So, okay, so if he can't find Moscow, you'll, well, find, you'll get yeah. some information. We, fix, the, fix the lights right. that are broken. Short term, we'll yeah. go on. Okay. We're going to fix the lights, get this climber, and whoever the planned ground person is going to be. Jared, Jared. We're, not, we're going to vote on that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll work toward looking at the system. Okay. Yeah, Anything else on? We're, 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 we're patching the here. Yeah. Anything else on the lighting? No. Number six, transportation. We're back to this. Again, we discussed this in the past. We were going to get some more facts as far as how many, what they would be used for, and all that stuff, and then whether we purchase or lease. Yeah, I, we are still working on, I know, the first month of school here was a busy month for transportation, so Mike and, and yeah, but department still working on getting the, you those numbers uh, for what events and what the number we could so potentially. We'll stay void for next month. Yep. Okay, let's stay void for next month. Uh, last item is the 22-23 busing discussion. A is empty seats on buses. Periodically, we probably all hear of why are there are so many empty seats on buses, why are we paying for all this fuel, especially when fuel is at the prices it was at, and it you know, it has come down some, but still, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. So, I guess the, the question is, is it by law that we have to have a seat for every student on the bus? No, there's or no we law that says that we do. have to have a seat for every student. Um, there is, uh, for state reimbursement for purposes, we do get credit for having a seat for a student. Um, I can give you some some figures based on um, our our capacities that we have for this year. Um, we have 26 buses that are 48 passenger <coughs> grade. Usually, the majority of our buses are 72 passenger buses. Um, our elementary uh, capacity, our average load for those buses that are easier for assigned students is 42.7 per bus. For our high school, our average assigned student per bus is 43. So that's the number of students that we have assigned to each bus. And that's, I mean, the reason we have the buses that we have is to cover the area that we have to give, provide transportation for all the eligible students in the time frame that we're providing that, that we have to have those buses run to get to the school on time or leave from the school on time to get to their next run. So there's mileage mileage figures into it, time figures into it, capacity sometimes figures into it based on some of the more areas, some of the areas where there's you know a higher concentration of students. Um, for reimbursement for purposes, the state formula figures in for and, and accounts for buses that may run empty with fewer students but maybe run longer miles for the rural areas and things of, things of that nature so as part of the reimbursement formula they don't look at each individual bus route 
to see what the capacity is. They look at a bus and say, okay, we want the greatest number of pupils that are assigned to any route that they do. So it benefits us to have maybe a bus that runs only with a few students in it for one route, but has a lot more students in it for another route, you know, for its second route, if you want to call it that. So for PDE purposes, our 26 buses, our average student assignment is 49.7. And generally a bus holds comfortably two per student, two students per seat is around 48. So that's sort of what we work with. You get anything more than that, and we do have some buses that are have us have higher assignments. We're not sure what the ridership is, is on that. We really don't. I don't really follow the ridership on that. I we take into a sort of consideration that there will be some parent transport. There may be for some high school purposes. There may be some parents or students driving and things like that. But we still get credit for those students for, for PD purposes. So, so Mike, some time ago we sort of changed our busing so that if a student was not normally eligible to be bused, but would be out on one of the main bus route, transportation routes, that we would kind of collect them in various pods and then transport them. Are we still doing that? We still continue to do that. In fact, yeah, um, those students, we, although we get credit for them here, I have to bring them back out when we do our state, our state reporting. Those students are, not eligible for reimbursement because they live for high school for secondary purposes less than two miles from the school for elementary purpose less than a mile and a half now for elementary purposes majority of our students i mean i'm transporting all our elementary students at this point in time the majority of our students at the elementary level are eligible for transportation because of where the schools are located and that's because of hazardous walking route that's been determined by PennDOT. so we do get credit from for the majority of our elementary students. It's the high school students that you, you usually have to break out, you know, and and reduce our our our, our reimbursement claim for. It, so, is it fair to say, Mike, the buses more the Ben Franklin side are probably, have, for the most part, less assigned to the buses, but that is because of ride time. That's in correct. the area that they have to cover so you, there is no doubt there are people probably seeing buses that are not filled to capacity but doesn't mean that those kids don't have a long bus drive because of the area that has to be covered. Okay, Eisenhower, we, we, we our to our high school buses that all no run towards the western edge of western part of the district they all have fewer students on the buses but their ride times are generally longer than so. yeah. we could put 60 kids on the bus and send them to select but then we're going to have to double our ride times Mm -hmm. And and that's that certainly hasn't been acceptable at this point. Is there a rule when they get off the bus? Because I've seen this with two buses now. They have to wait twelve seconds if there's five kids getting off the bus. You wait twelve seconds between in between kids. There's no rule that states that. Generally, I mean, you mean for loading and unloading students? Yeah. Or? No. Well, it's one right up here. It's been three days now. There's five kids that get off. They all look like they're siblings. 12 seconds in between them, and then they're screaming to the back, standing there, and then when they get off, they, they have to wait until they walk. It's it, The traffic's piling up. I can't imagine. We used to be told, get off the bus. Like, Did the, the bus even stop for you? <laughs> I took the bus. I the bus. <laughs> but, no, we don't, we don't have any, any rules or, or anything like that that, that states that, but I mean, generally kids, you know, if they're not paying attention, they're gathering yeah. their things up or something like that. It might especially the younger ones, it might take them a little bit longer than I just get off the bus. Well, right. I would have a talk about that. Get off the bus as fast <laughs> as you can. People have to get somewhere. Any other questions on the empty buses or the appearance of empty buses? All right. I, I do have a, we'll go to, item to add. Huh? I do have an item to add. We'll never get All to right. B is the overall route changes. Uh, how they're operating this year. We did make changes, I think, last year mm -hmm. to the to the routes. So we just wanted to hear the updates, how it's going. Generally, they're working pretty well. We do have two routes that are have been uh, an issue. One is over in Ben Franklin area, and last week I took uh, took some time and reviewed some of the routes over there, and we're making adjustments to it. That's going to go into effect this week. The other one was on this East Pike side, and uh, Mr. Stance. Uh, Mr. Stance's child children's route, and we're 
we're seeing some significant problems with that one. So uh, again, we're making some changes, some adjustments that are going to go into effect this week. It's going to affect a few other buses, help uh, absorb some of the. We think that uh, we think that the changes we're we're making are going to uh, end up being a, a benefit for everybody. Mike, when do those take, changes take place, sir? Uh, we're looking at Wednesday. Thank you, sir. This Wednesday? Yes. Thank you. Any, any, I think I'd ask some of the principals. Nobody else was hearing anything that I, I know. Kevin and Aaron, I'd ask you guys. Yeah. And, Aaron and Kevin, I'd like you to speak up because last time I talked to yeah, you, both you said you like it. You like yeah. the new schedule that's working well for you. We've got two issues we know, two class sizes. One on both sides of town that you have to work to resolve, correct? But right. everyone else? No, we're able to start at 8.30 each day. The buses are in. This morning we were, we were up and running by 8.35, and that's fast. We cooped a good 20 minutes of time <coughs> that we were losing, yeah. so that's great. Yeah, we've done it real smooth, too. Yeah, and just to rehash, that's why we made this change, which mm -hmm. we give more uh, class time. Instructional time, yeah. yeah. And, Mike, you addressed that you're working on two concerns that were brought up, correct? Yes. Thank you. Like, was there a specific issue that was – can't break those routes. Yeah, um, for, especially for the one over in this area here, we just found that, that uh, the way that it was set up had a lot of traffic issues once it got out and started doing it. Um, coming out in and out of areas where they need to make a, have a left hand turn or something like that, and there'd be waiting for traffic to get out. We're, we're trying, trying to merge on to you know, one of the main, main arteries, North 4th Street in particular. Uh, out on one <coughs> time of day, they're hitting a lot of track and they have trouble getting out of some of the side streets that they're coming into. And that bus in particular had several areas where it was breaking off of one of 119 uh, to <coughs> students and then come back out. So we're now trying to share the share the love, share the wealth of that. So we've got a couple other buses that are doing some of those things as well too. So. Should should make a, a change, an impact on on the uh, on the ride. Yeah. Thanks, Mike, for doing this, and thanks for bringing Tony <coughs> working with Mr. Travis. Tom, you have something good for the good of the order. I do, I do, I do. I just um, remember it's past seven thirty. <laughs> doing well, sir. I would tell you, you're doing well. You're doing well, you're doing well sir. We're secretly judging you. <laughs> we were delayed 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we could be done by now. Well, well, on Tammy. Um, yeah, we could. Eisenhower needs to go to zoning, and, yes. um, and it needs to go yesterday. Yeah. Um, there's some, going to be some changes at the borough, and we want to deal with people that we know. But, yeah. but <coughs> I don't expect Chang to see. Changes in what regards, Tom? Some personnel. personnel. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the parking that we're showing in School Street needs to be at a variance. Well, they sent an email. You missed the meeting last week. They did send an email with a Kim. <coughs> Kim? Is it Kim? Yeah. Okay. Who's Kim? The borough manager. Yeah. Nicole. 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 Yeah. Nicole. Yeah. yeah. She said sense. they're okay with it. We, they're not going to plow that, which we. I wasn't even asking for that. You're not going to require the good zone? It'll, it'll probably require the zoning. And the, the to go to zoning is a huge time frame. Yeah. And it's an unpredicted. Right. You sent that outcome. email to Elijah today. Okay. So yeah. send, I sent you the form. Yep. It's a real simple form. Right. But I'd like to get that process yep. started so that if we do have a problem politically with the borough, that it, get, that it comes to the surface. Right. Okay. Anything oh, else? Just one more thing, real quick, please. Uh, they're going to schedule work uh, morning on October the eighth, Mike, over at East Cl or Ben Franklin. I'm sorry for the outdoor classroom. Okay. If maybe you could send something out to people. So yeah. A bigger group. Of people. Absolutely. That's a Saturday, right? Yeah, Saturday yes, eight to twelve on yep. the eighth. Thank you. Can we just have on the record too, Mr. Harley and Mr. Travis are also wearing green today supporting the Eagles. So can we have that on the record, please? <laughs> <laughs> Is that on the record, please? <laughs> supporting the what? Eagles. Eagles. Oh, the Eagles, thank you. Oh, All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.